What are sure signs that will let you know if it is an ACL tear? The sure signs that uh, you're looking for when you're going to see an ACL tear is first the mechanism of injury. And so that's always the first question I ask, what happened? And the thing that you're going to hear with ACL tears is the most, as I jumped up for something and I came down on one leg and I felt a shift. The second thing was would be during that scenario, did you hear a pop? And you're going to ask that. You don't always have to hear a pop and you don't always have to hear uh, have pain. Uh, but it's a good question to ask if you have that first the mechanism where you're coming and landing down on one leg if you say that the, it, you, you know you're asking did the knee shift in when you landed yes well that's your that's going to be making you think that it's possibly an ACL tear as well again coming back to what we were talking about the biomechanics earlier where cause it and then uh, next is really swelling. Um, anytime that you see swelling is what we call a blotment of the patella, meaning that underneath of the uh, underneath of the patella, when I'm looking at this model, there's actually a big kind of uh, connective tissue that sits on top of the patella, which is called the suprapatellar pouch. And so the suprapatellar pouch starts at this way and kind of spreads out, and this tissue lays on top of the patella. And so what ends up happening is if there's something damaged in here, it bleeds out underneath of the kneecap. And so when you have somebody laying down on their back, their kneecap's facing the ceiling, and you can feel that the kneecap's actually floating in the patient's blood sitting here underneath of their kneecap. And so there's an easy way to really test for that. That's a, that's a test that you look for that's going to show that a patient has internal derangement of their knee. So you know if they came down and landed, twisted their knee in on one leg, or they cut and their knee twisted in, they felt a pop or heard some kind of snap, and then they have a ton of swelling, you know that that's more likely. Probably lastly that I would look for, and like I said before, pain isn't always the, the one. So sometimes people do this and they won't even know for three days that they, that they tore it. It just feels like they tweaked their knee. Um, is the inability to fire the quadriceps muscle. And so a long time ago there was a study that looked at it by uh, Kennedy and was published in the, in the American Journal of Sports Medicine in uh, I think 1973 or 1974. Pretty cool study. They uh, looked at EMG activity of the quadricep muscle um, before uh, in, a, in a control group and also in the study group and then they scoped the, uh, well, the, the test subjects put saline solution in their knees and looked at their quadriceps firing. So 60 cc's of saline solution basically to mimic what happens when you get an ACL tear or what happens after you have an ACL tear. And from that, what ended up happening is that the quadriceps shut down. And so that swelling, what they ended up finding out, puts uh, pressure on the tissues and puts pressure on the joint capsule that holds everything together. The thing I was talking about here that holds everything together around the knee, it swells. And then there's a reflex mechanism that goes with that where the, uh, the tissues, when they become distended for too long, that reflex actually shuts down. So anytime that a nerve gets stimulated for too long of a time period, you get what's called an inhibition or basically that the nerve shuts down. And so whenever you get swelling for a long period of time, or really it can be acute, uh, the, the muscles are going to shut down because the nervous system and the reflex pathways are going to shut down. It's, it's kind of like a survival mechanism of your body telling you, okay, you have a bad injury here, we don't want you walking around or jumping around on this. The difficulty is, is what you get is called uh, denervation atrophy, which is different than laziness atrophy or just sitting around and uh, getting muscle wasting from not uh, using your leg, which is really called not laziness atrophy, but uh, disuse atrophy. And so denervation atrophy is a lot different than that. Uh, disuse atrophy is going to occur slowly over time from sitting around and doing nothing. And basically you still have this tone in the muscle that goes on because the nerves are still awake and alert and sensing uh, everything that's going on within the muscle and creating tension there even when you walk around. Now when that reflex shuts down, it's the same as almost being paralyzed. That muscle is just getting no stimulation whatsoever and so it completely shuts down. And when you see that happen along with the swelling, that's when you know that something's wrong. Uh, almost nine times out of ten, probably ten times out of ten, uh, you know that they did something, that there's damage inside of the knee. You combine it with the, uh, the mechanism of injury, and it's, it's almost an ACL tear. Does everyone need surgery? Yes and no. So, uh, 
there's a lot of people that make it through life without an ACL. There are very few people that make it through sports without an ACL. Everybody comes back to the, the Heinz Ward. You know, being here in Pittsburgh, everybody knows that Heinz Ward uh, does, you know, plays without his ACL. He would be termed what's called a coper. And there was a group from, I think they're from Delaware, uh, a sports medicine group out of Delaware, that came up with this copers, non-copers thing. Uh, copers are able to continue to have great biomechanics even without their ACL torn but it's still not recommended that people continue to go and play sports without it because you're going to create so much wear and tear on the knee. And actually the reality of it is long term the studies show that whether you get it repaired or not you're still going to end up with some uh, arthritis but what ends up happening is is that if you decide to not get it repaired and try to do higher level activities, number one, you don't get back to the same level of function that you were. So if you're looking at trying to get back to being competitive in the sport that you were in, you need to get it fixed. If you're done, it's your senior year of something or it's your last year and you're retiring and you decide that you don't want to go through the surgery and the rehab, that's fine. It's not going to be a big deal. But getting back to that level where you were at, Typically, like I said, nine times out of ten, you're going to need to have it fixed. Um, if you decide not to get it fixed, however, most people, and the research shows this, they do not go back to the same level of function. They may get back to some level of recreational exercise. Uh, wherever they were before they were in, they, uh, in the, th in the uh, before they got the ACL tear, before they um, had the surgery, they usually do not make it back to that level. And that's really with uh, whatever age group that you're talking about. And really, uh, a lot of older people don't have it fixed when they tear it. If you're 45 or 55 and you don't really do a whole lot, a lot of people won't have it fixed. Unfortunately, you know, now you're identified as somebody that has a bad knee. Okay, you're not going to get back to being 100%, and also your your physical function is going to decline, and that's something that we don't really want to have as a trade-off. And I think that uh, we're seeing physical therapy becoming more prevalent in society today because of that. You don't want to give somebody the opportunity to physically decline over time because they end up with all kinds of problems. Our bodies were meant to move, and they were meant to move a lot. Whether you're 20 years old or you're 80 years old, there's really life doesn't accept sitting in a chair all day. Fortunately for us, we have the technology that allows that to happen for people that can't move and can't take care of themselves. But it's not something that you want to accept that you're going to have this ever declining kind of downward spiral going on. And you know, even with the you know high school kids, that happens. They tear their ACL, and you know, really the uh, it's the, the world kind of seems like it's going to be over for them. You know, fortunately today we have these great rehab techniques and great surgical techniques that allows them to get back if they get to the right place. Thank you.